In this video, we classify the qualitative shapes of trajectories that can be obtained from two-dimensional systems amenable to the eigenvector eigenvalue analysis described in the previous video. In the last video, we found a vector equation for describing the general dynamics of the system by following these steps. We formatted the differential equations as a matrix equation. We found the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix and then formed linear combinations of the eigenvectors by placing the corresponding eigenvalues inside exponentials next to coefficients w1 and w2. At initial time t equals 0, the exponentials equal unity, making it clear that the weighting coefficients serve as a coordinate grid for identifying the initial position of the system in the xy phase plane. You can apply this method to construct the general solution in other problems when you can express their dynamics in the format of the matrix equation at the top left. Depending on the values of the matrix elements A, B, C, and D in a particular application, the eigenvalues can have different values relative to each other and relative to zero. For example, both eigenvalues might be positive, with the orange eigenvalue larger than the blue eigenvalue. Draw the corresponding eigenvectors coming out of the critical point in the phase plane and draw an example trajectory that is initially parallel to the blue eigenvector and which becomes increasingly parallel to the orange eigenvector at late times. Look at the exponential in front of the orange column vector. Because we said the orange eigenvalue is relatively large, the orange arrow lengthens by a relatively large percentage per unit time. The blue arrow lengthens by a smaller percentage per unit time because the blue eigenvalue is smaller. At this early example time point, the orange arrow is short and the blue arrow is long. The relatively large percentage change in the length of the short orange vector, let's say doubling its length, can be comparable to the relatively small percentage change in the length of the initially long blue arrow, so that together they prescribe a pink displacement vector with comparably sized components in the orange and blue directions. Because the orange arrow increases its length by a larger percentage than the blue arrow in a given time duration, the length of the orange arrow can catch up with the blue arrow at a later time. At this later time, the orange arrow continues to increase in length by a larger percentage than the blue arrow in a given time interval. But now that the orange arrow is long, we can go further to conclude that the absolute change in the length of the orange piece exceeds the absolute change in the length of the blue arrow in a given time interval. Here we are illustrating noticeable lengthening of the orange arrow with nearly invisible lengthening of the blue arrow. The pink displacement is almost purely characterized by motion in the orange direction. Using similar reasoning, we draw bending curves that start out at early times near the critical point, moving out mostly parallel to the blue eigenvector corresponding to the smaller eigenvalue, and then eventually moving out more parallel to the orange eigenvector corresponding to the bigger eigenvalue. You can call the blue direction the slow direction and the orange direction the fast direction. The bigger eigenvalue dominates the dynamics of the system as time increases without bound. This kind of critical point is called a node, specifically a source node or an unstable node, because all trajectories move away from it with time. Another possibility is that both eigenvalues are negative, with the orange eigenvalue more negative than the blue eigenvalue. In this case, the orange and blue pieces shrink with time, generating curved trajectories like this one. The more negative eigenvalue causes a relatively big percentage shrinking of the orange arrow in a given time interval, which corresponds visually to rapid movement of the pink trajectory, mostly paralleling the orange direction. While the orange piece might have rapidly become visually small early on, the blue piece might have shrunk only a small fraction because the eigenvalue in its corresponding exponential factor is not as negative. After the orange piece has already mostly shrunk, we see a leftover piece of blue arrow that continues slowly to shrink. The trajectories around this so-called sink node or asymptotically stable node approach the critical point, initially moving mostly along the fast orange direction and then, eventually, moving more along the slow blue direction. 
In this example, let the orange eigenvalue be negative and the blue eigenvalue be positive. The orange piece is shrinking and the blue piece is lengthening. The trajectories move in toward the steady state along the orange direction and then move outward along the blue direction. This is called a saddle, saddle as in giddy up and yeehaw. If the orange and blue eigenvalues are equal and positive, we might have two distinct eigenvectors that each lengthen by the same proportion in the same amount of time. There is no one eigenvector to be the slow one or to define the fast direction. We don't get a transition from one direction to the other. We get nice straight radial lines pointing outward. Similarly, if the eigenvalues are equal but now negative, we can get straight radial lines pointing inward. The top critical point is an unstable star or a source star, and the bottom figure illustrates an asymptotically stable star or a sink star. Another possibility is that we can find only one eigenvector. Let's make it the orange one corresponding to the orange column vector. Uh-oh, there is no second eigenvector to put into this linear combination. It doesn't make sense to write the second weighting coefficient, w2. We appear to have lost our ability to use two distinct weighting coefficients, w1 and w2, to specify any initial system state in the faceplane of our choosing. In this situation, a different technique is used to determine the general solution. You can search the internet for the phrase generalized eigenvector if you'd like to see the solution, but for this crib sheet, let's just draw the general shape. Both early and late behavior move parallel-ish to the lone eigenvector, but there are U-turns, intermediate bumps. It looks, crudely speaking, as though early behavior along the orange eigenvector makes a transition, not to some late behavior along a second blue eigenvector, but, oddly enough, a transition to late behavior along the orange eigenvector. Negative eigenvalues correspond to the same kinds of shapes drawn in reverse sequence in time. The top critical point is an unstable or source degenerate node, and the bottom example is an asymptotically stable or sink degenerate node. Some people call the stars proper nodes, and the degenerate nodes improper nodes. Sometimes, when you solve the quadratic equation that defines the eigenvalues of the matrix describing the dynamics of the system, you get pairs of solutions with imaginary parts. Here, sigma and omega are both real numbers. Sigma is called the real part of lambda, and omega is the imaginary part. In the chapter on linear algebra, we said that complex eigenvalues were hints of circular or spiral motion. Substitute the lambdas into the general solution. One eigenvector corresponds to the plus sign and the other to the minus sign. Factor out the common e to the sigma t. Rewrite the complex exponentials in terms of trigonometric functions. The stuff in the blue brace is periodic. Each time the angle omega t moves through 2 pi, these terms come back to their previous value. This cosine and sine stuff is machinery that can walk us around the xy faceplane in closed loops. The exponential pointed out by the yellow arrow is a scale factor. If sigma is greater than zero, the length of the system state vector increases over cycles of oscillation. If sigma is less than zero, the state vector shrinks over cycles of oscillation. And if sigma equals zero, there is no long-term stretching or shrinking, and the system traces closed loops. I just said that if sigma equals zero, the trajectories are closed loops. This critical point is called a center. The loops fail to move arbitrarily far away from the critical point with time, so the critical point is not unstable. You can say that a center is stable. However, because the trajectories also fail to become arbitrarily close to the critical point with advancing time, we are not permitted to call the center asymptotically stable. When sigma is greater than zero, the exponential scaling factor causes loops to open up and move farther away from the critical point with each circuit. You can call this an unstable spiral or a source spiral. Please note that the illustrated trajectory does not start exactly on the critical point. If it did, it would stay there forever. When sigma is less than zero, the exponential scaling factor causes loops to sink toward the critical point. This is called an asymptotically stable spiral or a sink spiral. 
Again, the illustrated trajectory does not actually touch the critical point, because if it did, it would have had to have already been at the critical point since the eternal past. In fact, none of the illustrated trajectories on this page actually touch their respective critical points. The only trajectories that touch the critical points are the trajectories that remain on the critical points since the eternal past and moving into the eternal future. When studying two-dimensional dynamical systems expressed in the matrix format at the top left of the screen, we know ahead of time that the possibilities are finite. Nodes, saddles, stars, degenerate nodes, spirals, and centers. By sketching the critical point, null lines, a few representative quivers, by calculating eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then by classifying the relationship between the eigenvalues using this chart, it becomes very easy to sketch qualitatively accurate phase portraits using only a small number of initial calculations. In these videos, we described the transcription translation model. We studied its trajectories qualitatively by sketching a phase portrait. We identified eigenvectors that gave us the general solution to the system, and then we classified the patterns of trajectories that can surround critical points of other systems analyzed in the same way. The systems of interest in these videos are matrix representations of linear operators. The crib sheet at the bottom right corner shows whether trajectories go into, out of, both into and out of, or around critical points. In other words, the crib sheet classifies the stability of trajectories. We refer to the topics on this page, particularly the more analytic stuff on the right, as linear stability analysis, 